someone just said, welcome home. Thank you. Uh, can everyone hear me? Thank you. There was a time when Australian citizens simply asked their governments to do good. Today, we are forced to hold public rallies on the streets of Parliament to demand that politicians stop doing evil. Yeah. A pox on their house. Yes. Yeah. On Tuesday, we celebrated Mahatma Gandhi's birthday. A man who said, a nation is judged by the way she treats her animals. Well, today, by Gandhi's measure, all around the world, Australia is being judged in the harshest of light. Indeed. And tomorrow we celebrate St. Francis' Day, the patron saint of animals. So today I call on every church, temple, synagogue, mosque, on every priest, imam, and rabbi to issue a clarion call from every pulpit that live animal exports is an evil, disgusting abomination and it must be eradicated immediately. <laughs> Donald Horne said that Australia was the lucky country and Bob Hawke said he wanted us to become the clever country. But because of this disgusting, noxious live animal trade, all around the world today, we are increasingly being known as the cruel country. Is that the legacy we want to leave for Australia? No! No way! <laughs> well said. Whilst progressive nations were developing intelligent industries in science, aviation, aerospace, research, computers, engineering, and clean energy, our grasping, idle political leaders bragged about Australia's economy riding on the sheep's back. Isn't it time we grew up and learned to walk on our own two feet? To use our brains to create rather than our brawn to kill. We must no longer be a nation of factory farmers. Sadly, we still have the squatter mentality. When I listen to the haunting chords of that beautiful song, Waltzing Matilda, I wish the swagman had kicked the squatter's backside, chucked him into the bull bomb, nicked his thoroughbred, and run off with Matilda. <laughs> Australia would have been a wiser, kinder, richer, and sustainable country if he had. <laughs> Let's make no mistake about it. Live animal export is not an industry. It's a bloody atrocity. <laughs> It is a vile, disgusting scam, a blot on the Australian character and culture, and it has no place in civilized society. Any politician who supports this vile trade should hang his head in shame and apologize or resign immediately. There is no place for him in Parliament either. I have about 500 projects around the world, largely around children and animals, and it covers India, China, Vietnam, Korea, right across Africa, 
right across the Middle East and into Europe, into the United States and into Latin America. And you should also know that I funded the Earthlings Trilogy. So believe me when I tell you I have seen a lot of stuff. And I've filmed atrocities around the world that would terrify and disgust the most battle-hardened, tough Australian soldier. Believe me, the live animal industry and trade is the most egregious, nasty and brutish of anything I have ever seen anywhere. And I challenge every politician to send my DVD footage to every Australian household before the election, and I'm willing to pick up the tab to do so. <laughs> Decent Australian citizens should be allowed to decide for themselves, not the greedy profiteers in grubby backroom political deals. The livestock trade lies to you when they arrogantly claim that they and they alone will improve animal welfare standards in these foreign countries. And they pompously imply that they are educating the Middle East and that they are doing animal welfare a favor. What a shameful preposterous, outrageous lie. Yeah. Believe me, every penny of my own money that I invested in the Bassettine slaughterhouses in Cairo to improve the animal welfare standards was utterly wasted. The cruelty there is as vile as ever. So here's an idea. Let this filthy trade conduct a simple, low-cost experiment. Let them demand that all their importers install CCTV cameras in those ghastly gulags that they call slaughterhouses. and let them broadcast a direct feed onto the internet 24-7. Yeah. It won't cost much. Let the whole world see this grim, nasty, squalid bacchanalia of butchery. After all, what have they got to lose? They've been telling us how good things are. People with nothing to hide, hide nothing. Yay! Believe me, no gimmick their spin doctors can concoct will change one fact. That terrified, innocent Australian animals born on Australian soil will be dragged onto death ships, transported across miles of rough oceans to the Middle East and elsewhere. And they will endure grueling hardship and nauseating sickness. They will be imprisoned in cramped, claustrophobic steel racks and watch as thousands of their fellow victims die en route and their bodies callously chucked overboard into the sea. And they are the lucky ones. And when our tragic Australian animal survivors finally arrive at these hell holes, they will be tortured. Each individual sentient animal from Australia will suffer an agonizing, terrifying death at the blood-stained hands of brutal, knife-wielding strangers. And it will be another nail in the coffin of Australia's reputation. These are the facts. 
and anyone who defends this hideous industry is indescribably cruel, blindingly ignorant, or deliberately obtuse. Let them choose one, two, or three. Isn't it ironic? Our Australian history books tell touching stories of young Australian soldiers in the Middle East at the end of World War I who refused to leave their faithful horses behind, choosing instead to take the last sad and lonely walk with their beloved horses out of sight and ending their lives with a bullet in the brain from a service revolver. And where did all these tragic, sad scenes happen? In the same bloody places that this cruel trade is sending tens of millions of Australian animals to their agonizing death for 30 pieces of silver. Can you think of a more humiliating betrayal of a nation's trust? Can you tell me and tell me the truth? Can you think of a more egregious betrayal of trust? No! I come from the corporate world. And my friends and I and my colleagues remember the days when Australia was admired as the fair go country. This cruel trade has made us the anything for a buck country. And remember, every industry in Australian economic history has undergone rationalization. Mining, airlines, banking, steelmaking, retailing, insurance, transport, textile, clothing, footwear, forestry, every single one of them. But this filthy trade demands that they be given preferential treatment, protected like a sacred cow, demanding privileges to which they've never been entitled. They've got to go. And go they will. As Martin Luther King said, cowardice asks the question, is it safe? Expediency asks the question, is it polite? Vanity asks the question, is it popular? But consciences ask the question, is it right? So let us demand that all political leaders, liberal, labor, and national, simply grow a spine and ban this filthy trade once and for all, simply because their conscience tells them that it is right. And let's remind them they are not our political leaders. They are our political servants. I asked one of my colleagues to call Rupert Murdoch a few months ago to discuss the live animal export issue with him. And Rupert graciously invited my friend to attend the News Corp's AGM in Los Angeles. And he also permitted him to ask a question on the open, open floor of this massive meeting. And he undertook to answer the question himself. This may surprise you what I'm going to say. True to his word and full marks to him, Mr. Murdoch publicly, on film and on audio tape, which I have, condemned the live animal export industry unequivocally and unconditionally. The trade was cruel and it did not measure up to the standards of his ethics. That's what he said. Full marks again. We must always give credit when it is due. 
Then a little later, one of his newspapers in the UK breached the most fundamental principles of decency, invading the privacy of citizens for commercial gain. Rupert Murdoch stated that his newspaper did not measure up to the standards of the ethics he, he held, the same words that he'd said just a few months earlier. And then he surprised the whole world with his decision. He shut the newspaper down, the news of the world. Over 100 years of tradition, gone, not a moment's hesitation. Today, I call on Mr. Murdoch to show the same strength of character and shut down every newspaper that has publicly endorsed this vile trade, the very trade that he himself has already condemned. <laughs> shut them down. We know their names, we know their addresses. Let's shut them down and fire every editor who supported this vile practice. And after I've thrown that left hook, it's time for me to throw an uppercut as well. Let him also call, I also call upon him to castigate the cowardly politicians who ignore this vile cruelty on Australian animals, a subject that I have to say Mr. Murdoch himself has not tried to shirk. Once again, credit where it is due. And may I also put on record the fact that the, at the Australian of the Year Awards, Dame Elizabeth Murdoch, his, his wonderful mother, one of Australia's greatest human beings, graciously put her name alongside mine on a public notice which we published in every newspaper around Australia, condemning the ghastly live animal export trade. So today, I call on every Australian citizen to get angry and get a voice, get active and get organized. Tell every person you know and every politician you, exec you elect, we can fire them just as easily as we hire them. The game is up. Anyone, and I mean anyone who supports this filthy trade, will be looking for a job. It is only when this barbaric trade has been confined to the garbage dump of history will, be, will we be able to truthfully say with pride in our hearts those immortal words, Advance Australia Fair. Let's bring on that wonderful day. Australian animals have earned the right to be treated decently and they have waited long enough. Let's end this barbaric trade once and for all. Let's do it now. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bill. Thank you so much.
much. What an inspiration. So if you're not fired up after that, well, I don't know, I give up. Thank you so much. And I just mentioned, this is Phil's mum here. This is Winston.